Well, here's a quick little tutorial on running or staying. Should I run or should I stay? You're si you got a 6-3, you're red. It's a normal match score, money game, unlimited game, whatever you want to call it. It's uh, nothing special about the score, and you have a 6-3. Should you run or should you stay? One of the things that might help you decide is something that I coined, a term called Symborg's Law, and I'm very proud to put my name on it because I was the first to put a name on it. It certainly wasn't, I certainly wasn't the first to think of this idea. It's very similar to Kit Woolsey and Woolsey's Law. Put yourself in your opponent's shoes and ask yourself, if you were blue, what would you really, really want your opponent to do? Well, if you were blue, here's the song I would be singing if I was blue. That's right. If I were blue, I'd want my opponent to stay here. I wouldn't want him to run because I've got this blot here and the race is close and I think I would be sort of afraid to hit him. I only need some certain numbers that would hit and cover and I'm not happy to be leaving a blot with his board. I would hate to see him run. That's one indication and one way you might know it's right to run. The race is close. You've got your best game plan is to race here and running is your best play. Let's see what our friend Extreme Gammon Plus Plus has to say. Plus Plus is the best evaluation you can get out of Extreme Gammon short of a rollout. And it says, do not stay. It says staying is about a 15% error. You're going to win the game 6% more by running. Uh, yeah, you, uh, you get gammoned. Oh my goodness, you get gammoned 2.2% versus 3.6 you actually get gammon less when you run too because you get that checker moving so if you're afraid of the gammons that's another reason to go well what happens if the point is covered and he doesn't have this blot then it doesn't make sense to run he's got one two three four builders to point on you and if all the doubles work that's 16 pointing numbers four times four is 16 it's very simple if all the doubles don't work then he wouldn't have 16 numbers you'd subtract, but double ones, twos, threes, and fours all point on you. So there's 16 numbers that point on you. And then there's, uh, well, there's not any pick and passes because all the ones uh, work to point on you, and that's the only pick and pass number. So 16 numbers is quite a bit. And if he's forced to hit he, 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 he loose, you're still not favored to hit him back, although that wouldn't be so bad for you. But now you would stay. Okay, let's take a look at a, Another situation of stay or run. Here, you're probably going to lose the game. This is a question of whether you should stay or run. And why would you run here? Because it would decrease your chances of getting gammoned. Would it really decrease your chances of getting gammoned? What if he rolls a 2-1, one, double-1, one, double-2 and points on you? What if he rolls a 1-3 or a 2-3 or a... Uh, two, four, and picks and passes. Yes, those numbers will hurt you if you run, but there's a lot more numbers that hurt you uh, by staying because you're wasting a lot of pips here. You've got nine pips that you can use to get around the board, and if you bring this checker in with the six and you move another checker inside, you're only using one of those nine pips to bring checkers around to get off the gamut. And if you stay you still might get a shot and you still might be able to win the game by staying with one checker. So here you would really rather run. And it's quite a difference. I have to go down all the way to here, about a 6% difference. Uh, in either case, you're not winning the game much, but you're saving gammons a lot more by running. Now, what if you weren't wasting so much? This is a case where you wouldn't waste very much at all with the 6-3 and you cover the ace, that's a pretty good argument to stay. And that's what you need, is a pretty good argument to stay. Look at this, 0 .004. Extreme Gammon saying to you, you know what, you're not going to win this game much anyway. You may as well be making the play that's going to get you Gammon less. 
and that's the running play. So that's what you have to think about in these plays. There's a whole bunch of reasons to stay your run, a bunch of criteria. Uh, my favorite criteria is, number one, what is your game plan? Is racing your best game plan or waiting, staying for the shot? Number two is how much ammunition he has to go after you. Number three is gammons, considering the gammons. The cube might be a consideration. If the cube is on his side and you run, he can double you out. For example, of course, he'd have a big double in this position anyway, but in other positions, running might get you doubled or staying might get you doubled. So you have to think about the cube. All these criteria come into play. How much ammunition he has, his board strength compared to your board strength. And a big one is the alternative play. In this case, you've got a reasonable alternative play uh, compared to running. And the other position, you really didn't. You were breaking your board anyway, and you were wasting a lot of pips. Now, you've got a much more reason to stay. You're not going to waste a single pip by bringing this checker in all the way. So now, I would definitely not run. And as you can see, running is about a 3% error here. So think about the criteria when you're not sure. Start looking at different positions uh, as far as whether you should run or not. For example, here, you should not run. Give him a couple blots in his board. And now it's much safer to run. But again, you don't have a huge reason to run. But look, it's, it's close. Running or not running, 0.011. But when it's a matter of saving gammons and saving pips, here you'd run like a shot with these two blots. You're not going to have to worry about being pointed on very much at all. So here would be just no question about running. It'd be a 10% blunder not to run. So looking at diversion or the possibility of the danger of staying is also a major factor in these positions. Hope you found these positions interesting. You can make up your own positions. Do something like this and find out if you should stay or run. Change, the, change your board to where you have something more like this and decide whether or not you should stay or run. Give them fewer numbers to hit you and point on you and make it more where you might crash your board. Would you stay or run? What are the odds here? How would you play this position? These are the kinds of things that I don't need to spoon feed you. you can, you've got extreme gamma and if you don't have it, you should certainly get it. And you can put these positions in by yourself. So as long as we're here, as long as we're looking at this, I just randomly did this. Let's see how smart I am. Would I stay or would I run with a 6-3 in this position? Well, if I run, he can only hit me with 1s and 3s and 2-1. Uh, well, that's already counted in the 1s. Looks like I'm not in much danger if I run. And looks like if I stay, I'm risking a lot more gammon. So, uh, oh, the 6 is forced. Wait a minute, I've got to... I've got to change this position to where you have a choice between staying or running. This is silly. Let's give it a choice between staying or running. Now I have a choice. Now I can either stay or I can run. And I think I'm staying uh, because I don't think the gammon risks are that much higher by staying. And I can win more games by staying. So I wouldn't bet on it, though. I could be wrong. But that's why that's how you learn. And by the way, if you're going to run, do you run with one checker or two? It might make sense to play the checker to here. I think you just run with one if you do run. But again, I'm playing 7163. Let's see. This is how you get better. This is deliberate practice. Move the checkers around and see when it changes. When you're wrong, study it carefully and figure out why. And 7163, give me a gold star. Thank goodness I got it right. Okay. Hope you enjoyed this gives you an idea of how you can do some of these exercises yourself. These are pretty common situations. They come up all the time, and we're often perplexed on how to play them, and, and it'll get easier just by doing it more. You develop reference positions. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.